do you like to feel bigger and better than everyone? Well, what better place to be bigger than a city that actually is bigger and... Okay, well, maybe not exactly better, but that got me thinking. What even are the largest cities in North America? Are they growing, shrinking, who lives in them, and why? Who cares? I love living in Booger Hole, West Virginia. And I love my hometown of Bug Tussock, Kentucky. Well, that's cool. But not all of us can get the ego boost we need from a town named after bug wrestling. Some of us want to know about the cities with real BDE. Which, for those unfamiliar with the term, stands for Big Disco Energy. And, uh, no debating that one in the comments. But just going by the population within a city limits doesn't quite quantify how big a city truly is. As by those metrics, a place like Jacksonville would technically be larger than much bigger metropolises like Boston, Miami, or Atlanta. The more accurate way to measure a city's true size, and how most other countries do it, is to look at the population of the total urban area, aka the amount of people living within commuting distance of the city. In the US, we refer to these as combined statistical areas, or CSAs. And if you're someone who's not just fascinated with how certain cities became so massive, but actually want to move to a big city yourself, I'll tell you what, let's hit 5,000 likes and I'll make a video on the 10 best big cities on our continent, and maybe even other continents too. But without further ado, these are the 10 largest cities in North America. Number 10. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. As the birthplace of America, Philadelphia sure makes quite the impression. Maybe because it's home to more impressionist paintings than any city in the world other than Paris. Or maybe because of its size. With nearly 7.38 million people living in the combined statistical area that spans just 7,336 square miles. Making it actually the third most densely populated CSA in North America. And while Philly hasn't grown much over the past decade, when you can Consider its cultural significance with so much U.S. history taking place here, and thousands of charming original buildings still standing today, it makes sense why it's always been one of the most populated cities. Sure, it's not quite as big as nearby New York, and doesn't offer quite as high of salaries as nearby D.C., but Philly is a legit big city with incredible museums, restaurants, parks, nightlife shows, and events throughout the countless diverse, walkable neighborhoods. And the job market isn't bad. I mean, the media and household income's a respectable $74,500, which goes a lot farther considering the median home value is just 228 grand. But even so, the city of brotherly love just doesn't get enough love, as it's often overshadowed by New York and D.C. Number 9. Dallas, Texas. Even with all the shopping, dining, sports teams, barbecue, and the largest contiguous arts district in the U.S., Dallas lacks a lot of the cultural and historical vibrance that make most large cities fun and unique. Partially because while it checks all the boxes of things a big city should have, it's about as soulless as a big city can get. And partially because it's extremely spread out and suburban to where most of the city just feels dead. Especially since nearly everyone drives everywhere. And they kind of have to, since public transit sucks and the combined statistical area spans 15,533 square miles. So sure, the Dallas-Fort Worth CSA population is technically larger than Philly's at 8.121 million, Million, but its population density is basically half that of Philly's at just 522 people per square mile. Honestly, if it weren't for the giant buildings downtown or the handful of fun walkable neighborhoods like Deep Ellum, Oak Lawn, and the Bishop's Arts District, you probably wouldn't even know this was a big city. But what most city dwellers see as a con, Dallasites see as a pro, is if you're looking for a safe, affordable suburban home to raise a family in, while also having access to big city amenities and an incredible economy, there aren't many better options. Because of this, the Big D is actually one of the fastest growing big cities, with the CSA population having increased by 19.3% over the past decade. Number 8. Boston, Massachusetts. Bostonians love to hate their tea. No, not that kind. Well, actually, that kind too. I mean, they did dump 46 tons of it into the harbor. But I'm talking about their other tea, as in the local train network, which is actually the third best public transit system in North America. And since Boston's also the third most walkable city, with the fourth most densely populated city limits of nearly 14,000 people per square mile, you really don't need a car to live here. In fact, it's probably 
easier to not have one, since you're more likely to find Nemo or all the stones in the Infinity Gauntlet than a parking spot. Not to mention, the streets are so poorly designed with random one-ways and seven-way intersections, which is only made worse by the worst congestion in the nation. But what'd you expect? Boston is a true urban metropolis with 8.466 million people living in the combined statistical area of 9,700 square miles. And since most of them hate their tea and elect to drive instead, you get tons of peanut butter and traffic sandwiches with extra jam. It's all worth it, though, when you consider that Beantown is one of the most unique and culturally rich cities, with nearly 400 years of history shaping each of the charming, diverse neighborhoods full of green spaces, state-of-the-art museums, concerts and shows, delicious seafood, incredible sports teams, and hundreds of historical sites and landmarks. And since it's one of the safest big cities, in addition to the economy and schools being among the best the U.S. has to offer, it's no wonder that people of all walks of life love living here. Number 7. San Francisco, California Similar to Boston, San Francisco is a beautiful, historic city with tons of unique cultural attractions and an incredibly dense city limits. In fact, it's actually the second most urban city limits in North America, with 18,635 residents per square mile. Now to be fair, the combined statistical area, which spans 13,565 square miles, isn't quite as dense, but with a CSA population of 9.714 million, a lot of people don't realize just how big and bustling San Francisco really is. Especially since it's one of the most diverse cities and the most walkable city in North America. But of course, if you want to walk the walk, you have to talk the talk. And if you're wondering what talks, well, money. Money talks. Actually, it more sort of yells because San Francisco is also the most expensive city on the continent with a median home value of $1.55 million. Now, sure, the median household income is also 115 grand, but even so, it's still pretty easy to find yourself breaking even thanks to all the fun, expensive things the city has to offer. Heck, there's even a cup of coffee here that costs 75 bucks. But at least with all the eclectic neighborhoods, world class art galleries and museums, excellent restaurants and nightlife, free and accepting culture, and gorgeous nearby nature, you'll never get bored. Number 6. Toronto, Ontario While it may not be as culturally significant, unique, or fun as Montreal, sorry, but even you Torontans know it's true. With a population of 9.765 million in its combined statistical area, Toronto is undoubtedly the largest city in Canada, and likely the most desirable North American city for immigrants. I mean, not only has it grown into the most multicultural city in the world, it's also the fastest growing place on this list. And as the second largest financial city, center in North America with tons of good paying jobs in literally every industry? I can see why. But even with a median household income of 86 grand, nearly every Toronto needs to be a workaholic just to get by, since it's also one of the most expensive cities with a median home value of 916,000 US dollars. And because of the city's fixation on money, Toronto lacks a lot of things money can't buy, like a soul. Even the skyline, which is the second largest on the continent, doesn't have a single memorable skyscraper other than the CN Tower. And what makes this even sadder is that many once beautiful historic buildings and neighborhoods were destroyed to make way for the generic half-empty high-rise condos that now dominate the city. Now, of course, it's nowhere near as bland as Dallas, and certainly offers every big city amenity you could think of, as well as some great ethnic neighborhoods like Little Italy, Chinatown, Koreatown, and Greek Town. It's just that if Toronto were a food, It'd be a very plain, very tall, very cold seven layer vanilla cake with no frosting. But hey, at least it's the safest big city. Number five. Washington, D.C. Obviously, the capital of the U.S. is going to be a very historic and cultural city, but issues like severe economic inequality linger in the shadows of D.C.'s many monuments and museums. Then again, those shadows can't be that big because almost all the buildings here are less than 10 stories tall, making it the most European-looking skyline of any U.S. city. 
But while the buildings may not be tall, they are packed tightly together with a city limits population density of 11,300 people per square mile. Which feels even bigger when you consider all the tourists, college students, and workers who commute into the city from the rest of the combined statistical area, which contains a whopping 9.973 million people. So while the District of Columbia itself is the fourth most walkable US city, and has the potential to be full of so much character, it also has some of the worst traffic in the nation, and not nearly as much personality or charm as it could have. Now don't get me wrong, there is still so much to do here with tons of free cultural attractions and fun unique neighborhoods like Georgetown, Adams Morgan, and U Street, but since most of DC's population are transient workaholics due to the nature of government jobs, most of the city hasn't really had a chance to establish an identity. But hey, at least the median household income's 93 grand. Number 4. Chicago, Illinois you could explore a new part of Chicago every day for the rest of your life and still never see everything the city has to offer. And it's no wonder. With a combined statistical area of 10,634 square miles that's home to a diverse 9.99 million residents, each with their own unique story, culture, and lifestyle, the possibilities here are endless. And so is the cold. Seriously, the winters are freezing. If it weren't for the fact that you'll find yourself asking, Will I I ever feel the warmth of the sun on my face again? Only to realize it's still November, Chicago would easily be the most exciting U.S. city. There is so much history and character throughout the dozens of unique neighborhoods. It's got the second largest city center and skyline in the U.S. And unlike Toronto, Chicago City Hall is very strict with new developments and actually protects its historic districts and buildings, which has resulted in one of the most beautiful cities in the world world. Not to mention, the nearly perfect urban planning makes it incredibly easy to navigate with great walkability and elevated train above the downtown areas so as not to interfere with traffic, and highways below ground so as not to interrupt pedestrians in the city center. But no amount of incredible architecture, museums, nightlife, shows, sports, festivals, or food, yes, not even the deep dish pizza, can make absolutely freezing your face off worth it. Well, at least for me. Number three. Los Angeles, California. Unlike any other city on this list, LA is somehow dense without being dense. Basically, it's an urban conglomeration of above average population density that isn't super urban in any one area, but it keeps that medium density of 2,721 people per square mile for nearly 5,000 square miles, making it one of the most unique metro areas in the world. But unique doesn't necessarily mean good, because 18.645 million people live in the widest combined statistical area on the list, which covers nearly 34,000 square miles. And you know what that means. The walkability is doo-doo. Or more like do don't. Of course, there are some walkable areas like Sunset Boulevard, downtown LA and Long Beach, Old Town Pasadena, and the touristy beach cities like Santa Monica, Laguna, and Huntington. But for the most part, LA is suburbia surrounding a collection of smaller cities and towns, with more suburbs and ugly 12 lane freeways in between. Now, to be fair, each of those small cities have their own distinct vibe and offer tons of unique amenities that you can't find anywhere else in the world. But you're also gonna need a car to get to and from them, which makes the traffic and parking unparalleled chaos. And if your first thought is, people must spend so much money on gas then, that's honestly the least of their troubles, because most jobs pay low wages, and the average rent is nearly three grand a month, which has a significant amount of the population living in walk-in closets with roommates. Trust me, I wish I was making this up. Now before we get to the final two, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And for those of you who still don't think urban or combined statistical areas make sense and actually think a city's true size is just the city limits, even if those city limits are incredibly spread out, the 10 largest cities in North America by that definition would be Ecatepec de Morelos, Mexico with 1.645 million residents, Montreal, Quebec, and Canada at 1.763 million, Tawana, Mexico at 1.81 million, Havana, Cuba at 2.143 million, Houston, Texas at 2.304 million, Chicago, Illinois at 2.746 million, Toronto, Ontario, and Canada at 2.794 million, Los Angeles, California with 3.9 million, and then our final two cities, which get a little confusing. 
Number two and one. It's a tie between New York City and Mexico City. Well, not exactly, but let me explain. No North American city comes close to the size and scope of either Mexico City or New York City, except for each other. In fact, they're so close in size that it's hard to tell which one is really bigger. Depending on how you measure an urban area's true size, either could technically be the largest city in North America. Because on the one hand, Mexico City has a population of 9.21 million within its city limits, as opposed to just 8.8 million in New York's. But New York's city limits also span just 300 square miles, compared to Mexico City's 573 square miles, meaning its population density is nearly twice that of Mexico City's. And New York's total urban area population is 23.583 million, which is more than the 21.8 million in Mexico City's. But New York's combined statistical area is also 12,400 square miles wide, while Mexico City's is just 3,037 square miles, since Mexico doesn't measure CSAs the same way that Canada and the US do. So although New York has the largest skyline in North America, it's actually much less urban than the megalopolis of Mexico City, whose urban area population density is 7,000 180 people per square mile. And if Mexico City's combined statistical area included the cities of Toluca, Pachuca, and Cuernavaca, all of which are less than 50 miles away, it would have nearly 26 million residents. Yeah, if New York is a big apple, Mexico City is a watermelon. But what do you think? Is New York or Mexico City the largest city in North America?